Hello, hello, colorful people. Welcome to episode two of Pop of Color Live with Clara Sharon. I'm Clara. Uh, this is a late night talk show, or rather mid-medium evening talk show, where or, or we talk about the music industry and how oh, and the relevant parts of it to independent bands and artists. This, you can notice that my setup's a little bit different. To, this week I'm still playing around. Eventually I want to get like a, a full like desk, like a, those American political late night talk shows. They got the desk and I want to have guests on, but I'm still playing around with it for now. So let's get started with the news of the week. The iHeart Radio Awards were last night. Um, if you watched them, you would know that the former One Direction members, Harry Styles, Liam Payne, and now Horan, and all won multiple awards last night. Louise, must you play with the most noisy ball you own right now? My cat. However, the big loser was iHeart Media itself, as they might be declaring bankruptcy tomorrow. Yeah. Um, if they can't reach a deal by 11.59 p.m. Central Time, so an hour behind us, then it looks like that if they can't reach a deal with their 20-plus billion dollars in debt, they're going to be shutting down. They own multiple radio stations. They own some in, in my town, own 855 across the United States. They own many billboards, TV stations, print media, and, of course, the, that award show. While we're on the topic of big numbers, um, Sony is currently in talks to buy EMI's his, um, publishing catalog for about $4 billion. The um, EMI catalog is home to many of the great classics and old standard songs, which Sony plans on collecting streaming royalties from. If people are going to be listening to these old classics because they've been around for years and years and years and they're such a integral part of our culture. Sony wants to be the one who collects the money on them. Um, if you re recall last week's news about the um, classic artists trying to pass the Classics Act, which means they can get paid for or, or recordings that were recorded pre-1972, you can see where this is coming from. Speaking of streaming services, Spotify has just announced its collaboration with Smirnoff Vodka uh, they're going to promote gender equality in music because, as latest stats, none of Spotify's top 10 streamed songs of 2017 were led by females. The Smirnoff, sorry, Smirnoff Equalizer, you can tell I don't drink this vodka brand, um, is an algorithm that will analyze the listeners' um, music listening choices and tastes on Spotify over the last six months and will show them the percentage of gender or like male-led acts, female-led acts that they listen to, and then offer them a playlist that's tailor-made for their music tastes that is 50-50 down the middle. Oh, I mean, that sounds really cool, but why on earth is a vodka brand doing this? Well, according to a peer-reviewed medical journal study that was published recently, women are on the rise when it comes to alcohol drinking, and Smirnoff wants to position itself as the choice for women in vodka, and to do that, they're going to go all out with the equality thing. So I'm, I mean, I'm happy, whatever it takes. Um, while we're on the subject of demographics and, and equality, um, out of all the album physical sales of 2017 in the U.S., 14% were of vinyl records. It, also in the U.S., Cassette sales rose 35% over the last year, and in the UK, that number was 112%. So, like this. So, if you're thinking, maybe I shouldn't do a physical run of my music, well, this goes to show that people still want to own, own something physical for the memory. Maria, I mean, it's proving time and time again. People still want to own something. Everything might be streamed, but but the cassette, the vinyl, it's tangible. It's tangible, and us nostalgic hipster or millennials seem to like that. Okay, on to our main presentation tonight. 
I want to talk about networking tips. This is one of my favorite ones to do. So I'm going, so I'm taking the context of a big event, but I, it, so I can go straight through like from the start to the start to, to afterwards. And we're going to go from there. If you have questions, pop them in the comments. I see you there, Andrew. Hey. So yeah, pop questions in the questions. Pop questions in the comments. And here we go. Okay. Wardrobe. Wear clothes you feel comfortable in. Okay. When I say comfortable, I don't mean your sweatpants and pajamas. It's, no, no, no. It's comfortable and confident. My biggest fashion wardrobe of, um, rule is always wear one piece of clothing that's slightly out of your comfort zone and makes you feel super confident. Confident, but just a little bit outside of the comfort zone. Because if you don't, never wear anything out of your comfort zone, you're going to slowly descend into sweatpants and PJs every day. If you wear an entire outfit that doesn't make you feel confident or comfortable, you're just going to feel weird. Weird not like yourself all night. So see if you can find a mix of something that's professional and makes you feel awesome and, and confident enough to go talk to people. Wear a conversation piece. Two or three is better, but this is an idea of if you are going to go out to an event with lots of people mingling, what if if you if they want to approach you, here's a way to Oh hey Autumn! This is a way to get them to remember you or give them a reason to approach you by wearing something that it, that they can come up to you and comment on, whether it be a t-shirt from your favorite TV show or a pin about the, of a sport you play, a, that kind of thing, like these earrings, for example. Well, they're musical notes, so if I'm not going to a music-related event, Lots of people can who notice will say, oh, do you play music? And that leads the conversation. Um, wear something with your name or initial on it. So for us females, it's easy. We can just do a little necklace. This is a C. I also have one that says Clara. So that's great when you're meeting some people with your name. You can show them how it's spelt. Or they have a cue, a visual cue to remember your name because remembering names is a very good skill to have. For the gentlemen or people who are not into dainty little letter jewelry, uh, if you can do a patch or even a jersey style, if it's a casual event, something that has your name or initial on it makes it easier to remember your name. Because if people know your name, they're much more likely to go up to you. You know, I can't count the amount of times I'd be like, I want to go say hi to that person, but we've met before, but I can't remember their name, and I can't think of a good cute kind of way to ask them what their name is, because we've seen each other multiple times, but I don't remember their name. Whereas if they had, had a jersey with their name on the back or their name spelt on us, monogrammed on something, bam, it's so much easier. Next, we're going to talk about the toolkit. Got notes here, so I'm just going to... Okay, a, you're going to want to bring a bag or something with very, very deep pockets for all the business cards, swag, merch you're going to collect at these events, especially trade shows. Not all business cards come in this shape the shape when you're going to say trade shows that have booths from companies you might get pamphlets and those don't fit in a little tin case or a little itty bitty pocket you might want to carry something bigger with that um bring your own business cards don't leave home without them if you're if there's even a chance you're going to run into someone in your industry who's going to be helpful bring them lots of pens you don't want to run out of ink Ink, and if someone else is looking for a pen to write something down, you can be their hero. On the subject of being heroes, I'll come back to this later, but don't be afraid to save someone's outfit. Outfit, if they have food in their teeth, pull them aside and let them know. Oh, next, so breaking the ice. Keep your right hand free. It doesn't matter if you are left-handed. Most people shake hands with their right hand. If you are holding a drink, I think you're going to have to, hey Jeffrey, and someone wants to shake your hand, you're going to have to switch your, your glass of wine to your left hand, then shake them with a cold, clammy hand. That doesn't fly. Okay, so if you're going to hold a drink, hold it in your left hand, because even if you're left-handed, people are going to want to shake with the right, because the vast majority of the population is right-handed. Also on that note, don't just look at your phone the whole evening. 
and because that doesn't exactly encourage people to approach you. Uh, if they are serving food, do not load up on a food plate at a standing dinner. Here, this is a human animal psychology thing. If you see someone eating, you don't bother them. Same with my cat. If she is eating her food, this is not the time I grab her to pet her. She's focused. So the same thing applies with humans. We subconsciously think, oh, that person's been loading up on the shrimp plate and they're, it's this high above the plate and they're happy with it. I'll talk to them later. And then, of course, they forget because they get wind up, wound up in a conversation and that later never comes. So little at a time. Aim, never stuff your face too much that you can't have, continue to have a conversation with someone or start a conversation with the person you're aiming for who comes across the room to talk to you right at that moment. Sincere offbeat compliments. That's a great way to break the ice with someone other than, hey, you look great. If you can compliment a specific point of, of what they're wearing or something they said, that is great. That's great. That comes back to the conversation starter with, the, with having a conversation piece wearing. If you do the same thing, go back and forth. If you recognize the TV show they're referencing on their t-shirt, or you also play the sport that's on their lap open. Treat the big shots like your equals. I hope you're taking notes on this one, because nothing screams a little fish in the big sea like, hey, hey, look, everybody, it's the CEO of Capitol Records. Quick, quick, quick. Hey, you're my biggest fan. Will you please sign me? Yeah, no, don't, don't fangirl or fanboy over. The big shots, treat them like you're equal, treat them cool. If they start talking to you, then they'll know you're an independent artist. If, But they don't need to know that by you screaming and trying to take subtle pictures, not so subtle pictures of them from across the room. Or worse, the selfie, like trying to get them in the background. No. Give people free candy. This golden roll. Bonus points if it's in your brand colors or your logo colors. This is what I did at Canadian Music Week, in case you don't know. At Pop of Color, our logo color and our brand color is Vibrant Turquoise. So what I did is I went to a party supply store, you know, the kind where you can buy a candy in huge bulk. And I got a bunch of turquoise lollipops, hand them out, stick them on the back of my brochures at the event. And then, first of all, I made friends. Second of all, anyone who picked them up off the back of the brochure who I didn't see had a bright turquoise tongue. Hey, Rachel. Hey, Liam, they have a bright turquoise tongue, then I can spot them from across the room and know they found my candy. So yes, give out candies. Oh my gosh, Sophie, thank you. Insightful comment. If you forget someone's name, ask them how to spell their, that name. name. Or, hey, what's your name again? Then response, oh, I meant your last name. Thank you, Sophie. Yes, names are something I am currently working on because it's also like the you see them online versus you see them in person thing thing which can be like if you're so used to talking to them online and they have a picture that's taken at a special location or when they're on stage with all the lights it's or with their band or with a group and then suddenly you meet them in real life and they're just casual like oh no you're that person you realize half an hour later um back to saving someone's outfit if they like I mentioned before if they have something in their teeth Pull them aside and tell them, ladies, bring tampons with you even if you don't need them. Because if you're in the bathroom and the person next to you needs them, you're their savior for the evening. And maybe they might be someone important or introduce you to someone important because we help each other out. In conversation, describe what you do, not your title. Unless you are you have a title that's very, very specific and obvious, say record label president, then don't just be like, oh, I'm an art, I'm a drummer, or I'm a singer-songwriter, or I'm a music industry writer. Like, try to talk about what you do and spark the person's what's in it for me light bulb. Like, let them know what, describe what you do. So I play drums on jazz music, and I, and I've done, and, sesh, and I do session work in this town. You know, things like that, or just describe your sound, describe who your clients are, who you're aiming for, what you do and who you're for, that general idea. So they have a, so they can paint a clear picture than just a job title. Um, this is one of my favorite tricks is match your vocal tone to the mood of the room. So if you're talking to someone, one, or you're in a room of people who are very soft and very gently speaking, 
if you join in with a very soft and very gently tone, you blend in more than the other person next to you who starts talking like I'm talking right now, super chipper, or all over the place, like, ah! But keep it, and alternatively, if you're in a room full of excitable, extroverted people who are on top of the world and so happy to be there, or being the laid back, chill person, you don't fit in. And, and it's hard to like share the excitement and feel like you're one and the same and you two should keep talking if you don't match. Um, write down details of the conversation after. If you have a notebook, you can do it in there or on the back of the business cards. This is what the pens in your toolkit are for. So if, I use this example a lot, but if they mention they have a, a golden retriever puppy that they adopted, and after you meet them, write golden retriever puppy. And the, because then when you follow up, you can be like, hey, how's your golden retriever puppy? Did he miss you when while you were at the conference in Toronto or in LA or if it was out of town or just ask how they're doing? You know, it's a little personal touch that shows you know more about them than just what they do for their work. And it fosters the human connection, which is something very important with networking. As much tips as I can give, it's not a formula, it's not a scientific the process, it's really human to human connections and letting people know you have something more in common than what you want from them and what they can do for you. Uh, swivel the spotlight on them. Another thing with that is when you meet someone, especially if, I wouldn't want to, I'm trying to figure out how to phrase this better, but like if they're in the position where they're the person who's more likely to ask you for a favor than you are for them, Share the spotlight on them. This is something that immediately struck me. I met a um, owner of a PR company in, okay, it was the speed meetings at Canadian Music Week and how this worked was, so I, I had two back to back. So I met one person who was the editor of a bunch of magazines and music industry, music publications, and he just talked about himself. So really nice guy. He gave me a bit of advice at the end, but he talked a lot about his own journey and what he does. And then I switched over to the owner of a PR company for the next meeting. And all she did was ask about me. Like, like she, like she just excitedly asked questions. And I was like, Oh, you know who I am. You think I'm, you think I'm really cool. And this is who I keep talking to now. And I just, I, I thought that was really great to swivel the spotlight on someone, especially if they're more likely to know who you are. Sorry, if you're more likely to know who they are, and they swivel the spotlight on you to know who you are. I, I find that a really, really great way to keep connection, loyalty. And I mean, we're all growing in this industry together. It's still the wild west when it comes to independent music. So we're all going to be growing. So eventually you're going to be their size and they are, all, they might be a few steps ahead, but you're going to be moving along with them. So create connections. So now on to the afterwards and the following up. Keep your business cards organized. It's a good one. If you've got any duplicates, you can probably check those. If you, if the social links are broken and after searching you can't find them and you don't think it's really worth it to try after a while, if the person doesn't work at the company anymore, it's fine. And, um, keep your phone contacts organized. So if some people, these tend to be artists, in my own experience, to just like write their first name and their phone number in. So after two years, you're going through your phone in contacts and you're like, who's Mark? Or, or you can call to find out, or more likely it's gonna get deleted. So one another thing, if you're put if you don't have a business card and you're putting your name directly into someone's phone, and under company, write either your band name or where you two met or what you do in the industry so they can have some point of reference other than first name and your phone number. Um, when you're following up, say by email, remind them who you are. Or especially if you have an at gmail.com address as opposed to at your domain. Even they've met, it's so everyone's met so many people that if you're able to just subtly work in, hey, how's your golden retriever puppy? We discussed them at this event. And just helping jog their memory and bring them back to the moment when talking. Hey, Alan. Um, and lastly, this is handwritten notes. Okay, it might seem old fashioned and kind of dorky, but everyone gets emails nowadays. And their emails are usually for 
asking. Okay, bye, Jeffrey. You can watch the rerun later. It's almost done anyway. I, sorry about your battery. You, you can, most people, when they send emails, their pitches, they're asking for a favor. Or, and, and, and very few people write emails just to say, hey, how are you, without having a motive. Versus now, oh, note cards, greeting cards, Christmas cards, birthday cards, you have it, are those lovely touches of human connection that I, that I keep stressing are so important. So this is what I think is a fantastic idea. I did this last winter with Christmas cards, um, just, but you can adapt it to thank you cards. Just thank them in a handwritten, personalized little card. You can get them at a bookstore. You can get them at a stationery store. Get them at the dollar store and just send them in the physical mail. Most companies will have their address just listed under the contact, or if you're on their newsletter, they have to legally list an address at the bottom. You can send it there, attend A T T N for attention, and then who you're trying to reach. If it's an artist or a solopreneur, you can look for their P.O. box or their fan mail address. I mean, don't creep them to try to find their home address, obviously. But that, that human connection is the most important thing about networking. Once again, you can, it's not scientific, it's not a formula. I'm, I just listed a bunch of the tips I use when they come up that I've noticed I stumbled across or read about and have put into practice. I'm sure everyone has their own techniques. One day I'm gonna compile a master list where everyone sends in theirs. That would be awesome if you wanna do that. But yes, thank you so, so much for tuning in to episode two. I'm Clara. I've got a bunch of social links. I'm going to upload this onto YouTube. It'll also be available for reruns. Um, please sign up for my newsletter if you get the chance. I just, I compile all the articles I wrote in the last month and I bundle them up and send them on the first of every month. It would mean a lot to me if you signed up. Um, yeah. Have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful week. Enjoy your gigs. Do awesome things, stay sparkly, stay colorful, and stay lovely. Good night.